Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So today, in this video, we will going to learn some basic concepts of carbohydrates. So first, let's start with the introduction of carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are the organic compounds which comprises of three molecules and these are oxygen, carbon and hydrogen. And the ratio of oxygen and hydrogen ratio in the carbohydrate is usually 2 is to 1. So the empirical formula for carbohydrate is CN H2O N where these is comprised of three molecules that is carbon H for hydrogen O for oxygen and here N represents the number of carbon atom in that particular compound. So carbohydrates are hydrates of carbon. They are polyhydroxyaldehyde or polyhydroxyketone. Then carbohydrates are also known as saccharides which is derived from the Greek word saccharon which means sugar. So now we will going to learn about the classification of carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are mainly classified into three major categories and these are monosaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. Further, oligosaccharides are classified into three major subcategories and these are disaccharides, trisaccharides and tetrasaccharides. And we will discuss about each classification in detail further in this video. So next we will talk about monosaccharides. So basically monosaccharides are polyhydroxyaldehyde or polyhydroxyketone. Monosaccharides cannot be decomposed by the hydrolysis to give simple carbon. That means hydrolysis is not possible in the case of monosaccharides. For example, glucose, fructose and galactose. So next we will study about oligosaccharides. So basically oligosaccharides are the major class of carbohydrates where the molecules are composed of small number of monosaccharides unit. Then oligosaccharide is divided into three major subcategories namely disaccharides, trisaccharides and tetrasaccharides where disaccharide yields two molecules of monosaccharide units on hydrolysis. Its molecular formula is C12, H22, O11. And the example includes in disaccharide is sucrose and maltose. Next we'll talk about trisaccharides. Trisaccharide yields three molecules of monosaccharide unit on hydrolysis. Its molecular formula is C18, H32, O16. An example which includes in trisaccharides are rabinose, and raffinose. So next we'll talk about tetrasaccharides. So tetrasaccharides yield four molecules of monosaccharide units on hydrolysis. Its molecular formula is C22, H42, O21. Example of tetrasaccharide is stachyose. So next we'll discuss about the last class of carbohydrates that is polysaccharides. So polysaccharides are the carbohydrates which have high molecular weight and yields many monosaccharide units on hydrolysis. As the name suggests polysaccharides, so poly means many. So here many monosaccharide unit will be hydrolyzed on hydrolysis. So now let's discuss an example. Starch is a polysaccharide unit which on hydrolysis yields monosaccharide which is glucose and having the molecular formula C6H12O6. Some other examples are also there of polysaccharides which are glycogen, starch, dextrin and cellulose. So here I am going to discuss about the difference between the monosaccharide, oligosaccharide and polysaccharide based on the various characters. So first character is number of sugars. So number of sugar is 1 in monosaccharide, 2 to 9 sugar moieties in oligosaccharide and more than 9 sugar moieties in polysaccharide. Then glycosidic bond is absent in monosaccharide, present in oligosaccharide and present in polysaccharide. Then molecular weight is low in monosaccharide, 
moderate molecular weight in oligosaccharides and high molecular weight in polysaccharides now talking about the taste sweet taste in monosaccharide less sweet taste in oligosaccharide and there will be no taste in polysaccharides now talking about the solubility so monosaccharide will be soluble in water oligosaccharide will be soluble in water but polysaccharides will be insoluble in water considering some example monosaccharides include glucose fructose oligosaccharide includes sucrose and maltose and polysaccharide includes starch and cellulose so now let's talk about some properties of carbohydrates so ribose and deoxyribose sugar forms the structural frame of genetic material like dna and rna here dna means deoxyribonucleic acid and rna means ribonucleic acid so basically it forms the structural frame of these two genetic material second polysaccharides like cellulose are the structural element in the wall of bacteria and plants here polysaccharide like cellulose means cellulose is the structural framework of the wall of bacteria and used in plants then carbohydrates linked to proteins and lipids play a very important role in the cell interactions so now we will talk about some other properties of carbohydrates so let's talk about optical activity so optical activity means the property of any compound especially carbohydrates or sugar which have the tendency to rotate the plane of polarization by plane polarized light that means the rotation of plane polarized light forming plus glucose or minus glucose here plus glucose indicates that the rotation of plane polarized light will be clockwise or in right direction and minus glucose indicates that the rotation of plane polarized light will be anti clockwise or in the left direction let's discuss some next property of carbohydrate that is stereoisomerism so compounds having same structural formula but differ in the configuration that means their 3d structure alignment is different but having the same structural formula for example glucose has two isomers with respect to the penultimate carbon atom here penultimate carbon atom means the carbon atom which is next to the last carbon atom in the compound and they are d glucose and l glucose so here are the structures of d glucose and l glucose so let's now discuss some important test of carbohydrate so first is molish test in which the reagents are alpha nephthol when combined with concentrated h2so4 that means concentrated sulfuric acid it gives violet ring in at the junction of the two liquids that means when these two reagents are combined they will give violet ring at the junction of two liquids then this test is common for all the carbohydrates molish test is common for all the carbohydrates then we'll talk about the next test that is benedict's test benedict test requires the reagent copper sulfate sodium carbonate sodium citrate which we have to boil for 2 minutes after boiling these three agents for 2 minutes we will get green yellow or red precipitate and this test is for the reducing sugars reducing sugars are capable to act as a reducing agent because they have a free aldehyde or a free ketone group so the next test is felling's test in which the felling solution a plus felling solution b here felling solution a is copper sulfate crystals and felling solution b is aqueous potassium sodium tartrate when these two reagents combine and boil for about 2 minutes we will get yellow or red precipitate so the next test is barford's test so barford test is basically when the mixture of acetic acid plus copper acetate and these two combiningly will called as barford's reagent when these two reagents will combine and boil for about 2 minutes on the water bath 
then brick red at the bottom of the test tube will be the observation. So now Barford test is used to distinguish between the monosaccharides and disaccharides. So the last test of carbohydrate is osazone test in which the reagents required are phenylhydrazine hydrochloride, sodium acetate plus water. Now these three reagents will combine and we have to boil or heat for about 20 minutes. Now we will get the three observations. So the first observation is we will get greenish yellow colored crystals which is shaped in a fan like structure and this test is for the glucose. Second observation we will get thin small needle shaped crystals which appear like a ball of prickles. And this test is for the lactose. And the third observation will be plate-like crystals which appear like a sunflower. And this is the confirmatory test for maltose. So now let's talk about some important functions of carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are chief source of energy in many animals. So basically carbohydrate provides a source of energy which is the main requirement for body functions in animals and in humans. Glucose is stored as glycogen in animals and starch in plants. That means glucose has two forms. One is glycogen and one is starch. Glycogen is stored in animals and starch is stored in plants. They participate in biological transport, cell to cell communication and also carbohydrates helps in the activation of various growth factors. Carbohydrates also help in the regulation of nerve tissues and provide energy for the brain. So carbohydrates is a basic energy provider source for the brain as well. Carbohydrate helps in the modulation of immune system. That means carbohydrate also plays a major role in providing energy to the immune system. You can get the notes of carbohydrates in the description box below. If you have not watched my previous video on the basic concepts of biochemistry and biomolecules, the link is there in the description box. I will discuss about lipids, proteins and nucleic acid in detail in my upcoming videos.